Two days ago, Parkland, Florida was named the safest city in Florida. That's not what it was today. That day is, we can't really separate ourselves from that day anymore. It began as an ordinary school day, and it was almost over when gunfire erupted this afternoon. 17 people were killed, making this one of the deadliest mass shootings in American history. It just happened to be the high school I go to. So, I mean, this, the paper we produce, all the videos, all the papers, all the magazines, even the radio broadcasts that people do, the news interviews, those are gonna live on with us forever. So we're in agreement about that. So the print is gonna be the memorial stories and then hero stories like from the day. And I would like to print enough copies for every student at MSC to have one and faculty and whatever. So I'm thinking that we print like, you know, like 3,800. How many do we normally print? Normally we print 2,000. Okay. So it's a lot more. And so- This needs to be copy edited a million times. Okay. My name is Emma Dowd. I'm 17 years old and I'm a senior at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. Okay. That's the first time we really sat down and we said, we were all in a tragedy, like a tragedy happened at our school. We write the paper for our school. How are we gonna, how are we gonna write about this tragedy that everyone went through? And how are we gonna do it in a sense where it's tasteful and it's all very respectful to what happened to all of us. We're kids first and foremost, and we're students first and foremost, but we're also journalists and we took, you know, we took this class so that we could be journalists. Um, and so I know that I want to start this as soon as possible so that you know this can get in the hands of the people in our school as soon as possible. I'm Rebecca Schneid. I am the editor-in-chief, one of three editors-in-chiefs like, like, of like the Eagle Eye like, newspaper. Yeah. All right, you guys want to talk about anything else? All right, now tell me how you all are. How are you? I, I haven't, I haven't like, I've gone emotional and I've like cried, but I haven't like broken down yet. And I feel like I'm gonna break down when I go back yeah. into that closet. Like, right, like, but yeah. like on the one hand, it's never gonna be the right time. Yeah, and so we, some, we some have to them, go back to months. normalcy a little bit and try to heal. Well, but I understand people, there is yeah. no normal now. I know, I don't know, but. My name is Melissa Falkowski. I am an English teacher and a newspaper advisor. Um, I've been teaching at Stoneman Douglas High School for, this is my 14th school year. I feel like it's important to use um, my voice to be their voice, to be the voice of the people who were lost, to be the voice of the people who aren't ready to speak yet. And I think at least some of the kids feel that way too, like it's our job to report the story and to be the voice of what's happening. I know for some other people it might be harder to go back to school in general, but I know that it's going to be hard because this place that was my home for so long is the place where I've had my most traumatic experience of my life, but that doesn't change. I won't let it change the newspaper for me. I won't let any of that um, stop me from loving journalism and loving newspaper because, and so I'm going to work as hard as I can to step into that room and breathe and remember that I'm okay and remember that I'm safe and remember that I'm with the people that I love most. But like, remember we said we were going to let people come and tell us their story? Yeah, so we can put it on there. But what are we going to call that? Like, because there are, their stories of survival, but like, they're all at varying levels. Because some people were all the way, like, you know, we were all the way over here. And I was in newspaper class, actually. I was sitting um, at my desk with Delaney and Emma on either side of me, and the fire alarm went off. The reality of the situation hasn't really sunk in, but I know whatever this is, whatever is happening and whatever this is that has prompted us to go in the closet, real or not, like this is a, sto like, this is a story. So how can you, an event that's like affecting the whole school, like how can you not cover it? I was right here and then Delaney was there, Emma was back there, Maddie was here, Mackenzie uh, was Susanna here. I was so scared, I genuinely thought that I was going to die. When I looked into that closet, what, two weeks ago, I would have seen like happiness. I would have seen like me dancing on a chair with Frank Ocean playing in the background, blasting on my phone. And now when I look at it, I just kind of see fear. Do not leave my keys in that closet. No promises. What, is it up though? Like, do you, is that what you have open? Uh, I have it open on Eagle Eye. I just saved it as a draft. Yeah, can you close it? Yes, yeah. because I can't open it if you have it open. But Falk put it in a really good way that I can't look at it as the closet which contained my fear, but the closet that saved me. The first couple of days, 
it was less about like reporting for me. It was more about grieving and like dealing. At first I felt like it was fame, but for the wrong reason. But then I realized that this was our story and that I wanted to tell it. I don't want like a description saying they're a hard worker and stuff. Like I want to know about their personality. Yeah, the whole point of us of giving you somebody that you have personal connections with is that you put that emotional factor in there because that's the that's the one thing that makes this school different than like other publications is that we like know them or we should know them. I mean, I don't so. think that there's any way for us to I want to say not be biased, but I don't think we can be, you know, sort of unbiased in the story because we all experience it and it, and it happened to us. But I also think that because it happened to them too in a varying degree, that they have also a level of sensitivity towards these other kids and other people who were in the building with them and experienced it with them that somebody who's coming from outside doesn't necessarily have that, you know, shared experience. So, like, so like I just want an account of, like, because you were there, so, like, an account of it. Um, how you're dealing with it, like how you're feeling. There's a couple other questions that I have, but if you want to send me what you have and then I can ask you more questions, I can call you up if you want. It's absolutely going to have a page for each of the victims. This is a strictly a memorial issue. It's sharing their stories and sharing who they were as people. And I feel like the newspaper will be, it'll, it'll be the best thing we've ever produced. I wasn't in the right place to take photos for the past two weeks, three weeks. Like, this is the first time, besides taking pictures of banners around school, that I really picked up a camera and gone somewhere and took photos. It's like, I feel guilty being here taking photos at some times. Like, I felt guilty, like, getting up on that stage and taking the photo. Like, I, I felt like it wasn't right. Like, I feel like I would touch something and, like, break it, and I don't want to, like, I don't want to intrude, even though I'm, like, I'm from the city and that I'm not an outsider and I'm a high school journalist at the high school where it happened. I still feel like I'm intruding. I don't know, like it's not, it's not easy reporting on it for sure, like I, I almost started crying like, and it's hard reporting on like the kids who are freshmen too, I mean they haven't even been at the high school for a year yet. Like I didn't find my spot on the school newspaper till my junior year, like it's just crazy to think what like these kids could have done. I feel like a purpose, like this is my purpose, like I'm doing this, this memorial issue and I'm like honoring the victims in my own way. Oh, this is Dylan Kramer. Hey Dylan. Hey, how you doing? Good. Okay. Um, you good now? Are you in a good place to talk and stuff? Yeah, yeah, I'm in my car. So okay. All right. Well, uh, basically, we were just sitting in class like everyone else was, and we heard like a couple gunshots. I ducked behind the file cabinet and like, and then I saw him turn to like my window, and that's when I ducked behind the desk and I just heard the shots, and then I saw bullets fly right past me, bullets hit the wall, bullets hit like literally like like things that were right next to me hit the file cabinet. And then I looked back and saw that uh, there was like five or six people got shot and 92 of them were like dead immediately. And that was Nick Dorrett and Helena Ramsey. And they, mm -hmm. I, I checked uh, Nick's pulse. Was he, he, he was was, he was near you? Yeah, he was literally like a foot away from me, like close enough to where I didn't have to move to check his pulse. I, and then I was on the phone with the police and I was like, I was trying to be as calm as I could, but like Nick was a close friend of mine and I, I just, and I knew yeah. Helena, like, all year I had a couple of classes with her. So it was just, like, I don't know, it was a really crazy situation, obviously. Yeah. And it was just, like, it was, like, really, I, I, like, couldn't even believe it was real. Yeah. All right. Anything else that you want to, that you want to say? I mean, you, you, I feel like you spoke pretty well. Like, you, you said about your story. Is there anything else that you, you want to talk about? No, I think I'm good. All right. Well, awesome. Thank you so much, Dylan. Thank you. All right. No problem. Okay. That was rough also. I, I like, I know him. I've known him since we were like eight. So, yeah. I wanted, like I did was like, I reached out to her brother and I was like, hey, like we're doing like this memorial issue. Like, but like it's her brother. Like I, I kind of know her brother, like he's in my class. So like, I was like, like, would you be interested in stuff and like stuff like that? And they were like, no. I, I can't ask them. Someone else can do it. I'm not. I, I don't want to like, invade their privacy during this time. I know. There's some families that like literally email us and they're like, here's the photos. And then there's others that are like, I'm not interested. So, I mean, we're getting stuff done and like we're getting pictures from the victims' families and stuff. And so like slowly but surely. And there's some families I don't want to talk. There's some families that are openly able to talk. And like, it's just hard because like not everyone's at that same place of like acceptance. <laughs> My kids, they're at varying levels of 
you know, dealing with their feelings. And, you know, some kids are fine. Like, we were in New York for Columbia's um, spring convention, and it's with journalism professionals and, you know, award-winning publications, you know, from across the nation, and it's just an opportunity to go and get ideas on scholastic journalism-related topics. So, and a lot of the kids were okay, but then a couple of them were okay by the end of the week, and it was like, because we were doing all these, like, media tours and going to all these places, but also as part of that, we had to talk about, like, what happened at our school, and like there were all these questions and so it was like a trip that was supposed to be fun which it was also became a little bit about that and then for some people it was like too much to handle. I'm so tired and so stressed. I haven't done any of my homework. Oh, okay. She was gonna get parents quotes and if she doesn't get them then I don't know where she is with this story. I like told her I was like it's a great ending and a really great story overall. I was wondering if you could find a way to add a little more detail. I feel like it's just a little too fact dense. Maybe find some more detail to add about who she was as a person and individual, um, other than what she enjoyed in her free time. There. New York was really fun, but it was really like emotionally draining. We wanted to finish it by spring break, and New York was like the week before spring break. So we had like a core group of us who were like got in our PJs and got in Falk's room and just started like editing. We just wanted to get it done, get it like perfect so bad. And we just happen to be in New York, so it doesn't matter where we are, crunch time is crunch time, like you gotta get it done. Marjorie Stoneman Douglas, people come to the stage, please. The panel, like all of us took it hard. Like there was moments all of us had different breakdowns in New York. So the day after everything happens, we had gotten word that there was gonna be a vigil at the park that's about a mile from the school. And you know, I sent a text to the kids and I told them I knew it was gonna be really hard, but that it was our job. Sorry, I'm getting emotional. No, me too, that it's fine. It was our responsibility and it was our story to tell. But for example, um, I have a close relation with the Shentrup family, so I, was chosen to do Carmen Chentrups, and she has a best friend also named Carmen. Straight up front, I was saying what spot like depicts your friendship with her, like what spot reminds you of Carmen. And I actually shot the Humans of MSD photo um, at the piano where they met freshman year. And she looked at it and she said, like, this is Carmen, like this is where I see her playing the piano, and this is where I see her like just being here. <sighs> You know, we're going to print tomorrow. This isn't long enough. What are we going to do about this? It's hard to add stuff. Like, I've been looking up online. Like, Tyler didn't mention anything about chicken nuggets. And, like, that's what this kid's known for. Like, his love for chicken nuggets. Do, do we not have inter... Can we not get interviews? He did, but, like, he's on a plane right now. Like, he can't send them to me. Am I not doing well? I mean... <sighs> I mean, it's going. <laughs> Tomorrow we have to send this to print, and we have about eight to ten pages that are in like rough shape. Definitely not where I'd want them to be. Are these quotations in an okay spot? Because I had to move them. Are you adding? Here? But things have been really crazy. Hey. Sorry. Sorry. Are you okay? Okay. Are you going to your therapist tonight? No. Why not? Because he closes up the world. Why don't you go to Web3? Because those were people who were going to yell at me, so I stayed. Why, why would you? I, I would have yelled at her. I understand. Okay, can you go tomorrow? No, because I'm staying late again and I have work too. Go, but go, go after work then. I can, I'll see you. Okay. Also, just so you know, I think I'm going to therapy. Hmm? I think I'm going to start going to therapy yeah. again. That's good. Like, see what happens when I go. <laughs> I'm really surprised that today I, was, today I was pretty fine, which I'm really surprised about. Maybe yeah, you can text me. You talk to me the same oh. way that you, I talk to you. You can talk to me, okay? Oh. Give that to her to fix. Oh my God. I cannot today. Yeah. Rebecca. Schneid and yeah, Lewis. Yeah. Are you working on Joaquin's now? Okay. He put so much effort into his gifts for his girlfriend. They, their favorite color was yellow, so like he made sure that everything was like yellow, and he, he like bought her a telescope and put it outside her, 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 um, her window, like all this stuff. Are those possible covers or like yeah, yeah. that one? Yeah. It's the last look. Do you want me to edit it one more time? That'll be the last. Yeah, but don't go crazy, please. Okay. Only necessary edits. Got it. 
Guys, tomorrow you need to plan to be here until we're finished. Like, I need everyone here until we finish. Make sure your page has been printed and it's been read. Pardon the interruption. A couple quick announcements. I want to wish everyone a, a great spring break. For those of you that may still need um, some services with counseling, I want to encourage you to do that as well. Just hope maybe you'll have some time to do that. There are services available at Pine Trails Park uh, over the course of, of the um, spring break. Uh, with that being said, as always, be positive, be passionate, be proud of being Eagle. We are at Mystery Strong. Because some people like to wait until the last minute. Last look means like we just printed it and like we went through all these copy edits. Like it's gone through like five rounds of copy edits and this is like your chance to read it for like the final time. Okay. Yeah, all these should say last look on them somewhere. So I'm gonna go get the paper I just printed and look at it one last time. Uh, Isn't that crazy? Oh my God. Remember on Monday when we had Nothing. like five stories? <laughs> Um, we're gonna skip straight to Hickson. I don't think you get how happy I am this is done. God, I hope there's nothing wrong with this thing. With what thing? With this issue. If there's something wrong with it, we're gonna look so stupid. All right, so I'm sending it. I'm clicking send. All right, there seriously better not be anything wrong with it. We sent it off to the printer and it's being printed and we're waiting for it to arrive at school so that we can distribute it. So it's completed but not in our hands yet. That one. Oh, look at it. That's a good photo. It's okay, good. good stuff, good stuff. It looks so good. Yeah. I think it came out. I mean, it's definitely I don't I don't feel like um, super anxiety over it anymore. Like it's good. So just hopefully we don't find anything wrong in the article, okay? And if you do, don't tell me about it. I need you to hear me, okay? Today is just to put them out into our school community, okay? And it's gonna go out online today as well, okay? In fact, it will be online in 15 minutes, okay? So, yes, the world is watching. Wow. wow. It's beautiful. I'm, I'm relieved that it's done, but like now that it's done, it's like setting in that like this is real too. Yeah. It'll just be easier. Take 13 people, 13 buildings. And oh like, man, it's gonna be weird. It's gonna be weird not delivering in the freshman building. I think it changed the healing process for me. Cause like it's hard. Cause I have friends who have been like moving on and great and starting to get less about their grief, and I feel like I'm kind of just stuck in it. Like reading all those, I felt like I was stuck in it, and like I feel like all of it has shaped and changed who I am. Like I'm no longer just Emma, like from Parkland. I'm like Emma from Parkland who went through all this. I'm not worried I'm not worried about the letter but I'm worried about this. Like you know there's going to be kids that are going to be like I don't want that in my face. Like I don't want that near me. When you guys go in the rooms you just have to say we're here to deliver it. We're going to give one to every student and if you don't if you don't want it then you don't have to have it. Yeah. I know that organizing this issue and doing this issue is going to be the thing that I'm most proud of that I've done in journalism and in high school because People are going to see it and they're going to cry and they're going to remember their friends and they're going to learn things about the victims that maybe they never, you know, they never knew this person, but they're going to get to know them. Here, there's more right here, Kayla. Oh. We all walked out of the auditorium after, like, we dropped off the magazines and, like, we all just looked at each other and was like, oh my god, like, they started reading it and, like, you want to cry because, like, all that hard work you put into it, like, it's finally done and, like, it's finally something that, like, we can put behind us, but we're never going to forget it. It's so good to see that we did them justice. That's all we wanted to do.